Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to do another episode of Star Made News. Uh, today we're going to be doing a bit of a roundup on all of the latest articles from the official news page at star-made.org slash news. Today is the 3rd of November and I'm joined by Yelby. So let's take a look shall we? So first of all uh, we've got some big improvements. Uh, I'm going to do this in order of newness going backwards. So today we've got the faction point system to go through. Okay, so the system is a big addition. It will change, it will shape the player experience of Star Maid and take it to a whole new level. There was often criticism that there is not much to do after building, and this is the first step to change that. A lot more stuff will come in that regard. This system was planned for almost two years now, and I'm finally having the core system, uh, core systems developed to a state where this is viable. Also, one of the things that were most important was the design is abstract and can be adapted and adopted and changed should there be any need. In a let's just add this feature without making any groundwork approach, he probably would have got out faster, but the problems and the players would run out what would run into over time would have taken more time than getting in the basics in an acceptable state for it. The system is, a is an essential part of Galaxy Design. I've made it available first so existing players can test it on the current universe structure. A lot of things of course don't matter as much or matter as more as long as that structure redesign isn't released. All numbers mentioned in this whole faction point system explanation are exposed in configs so they're very simple to change. But on to what the system actually is. So. Let's get into faction points. Faction points are a new form of currency in StarMade which shall be abbreviated FP from here on. They are shared throughout the faction and in the future can be made physical for reasons that I will go into later. Their value cannot be compared to credits and resources as their total availability doesn't, sh doesn't follow the principle of an infinite universe like credits and resources do. Their existence as the name says depends on the factions of a server. So on a server with more players, the overall faction point count will naturally be higher, but the demand is also rising with that. Uh, faction point acquisition. A server now does hourly calculations. I'll call this a turn from now on. At the end of a turn, you'll, the following will happen. You get 50 faction points for every online member of your faction. You get 20 faction points for every active online member of your faction. And you get zero faction points for every inactive member of your faction. So, what is inactive? A member counts as active if the member at least spent 10 minutes playing within 48 hours. After 48 hours after log off, the member will become inactive and the faction no longer gets any FP from his membership. There are several methods in place to combat FP farming with multiple NICs on the same server. One of the biggest, so we're going to territory, one of the biggest things with faction points is the ability for factions to take territory. You can take a whole 16 by 16 by 16 sector chunk at once. If the sectors are also, ah, these sectors are also known as galaxy system. Taking a sector can be done easily with the faction module on a station or planet. If someone else has already taken the system, the faction module has to be destroyed before another faction can take the system. Territory had is the following advantages. Mining bonus in the galaxy system of six times. Other factions still get three in an owned galaxy system, so be alert of eventual thieves. The faction gets a notice wherever a player enters their territory. You even get a faction news post if that player is an enemy. No names transmitted though. Scanning range. See scanning. So I guess we'll get to that in a sec. Faction point spending and loss. Of course, you can't just go and claim every galaxy system as fast as possible. The following are the costs explained. Each owned galaxy costs 10 faction points each turn. Each owned galaxy system costs faction points in the distance in systems it is from the home base, or a random owned system when no home base exists. Each owned galaxy system costs faction points in the distance it is from a galaxy center, something that will be more clear with the structure update. It is the Galaxy System 000 in this case. The cost for centre distance will decrease the more total territory is taken. 
This means factions will probably move together a bit. Roaming vagabonds are still a thing since they don't use too much points. The first system is free. However, they don't have the luxury of a bigger base, of course. You can also lose faction points from player deaths. Each player death costs a faxed, uh, fixed faction point amount. Each player death also costs faction point amount times the amount of members in the faction. This means that while you get more faction points each turn with a bigger faction, you lose more when somebody is killed. Suicide does not count in that regard. There will also be a way to temporarily turn this off for mini games by admins. After dying, the player gets a 30 minute protection of losing faction points again. So repercussions for too few faction points. Should at the end of a turn the faction points of a faction be below zero, the faction will lose the galaxy system that is farthest from the home base, random if there isn't one. As an option for admins to turn on, the home base will also become attackable when the faction loses all of its territory and are below zero at the next turn. So on to scanners. There is a new block you can put on a ship or station. Its mechanics work similar to the jump drive as it needs to be charged up to do a scan. But unlike the jump drive, the scanner will automatically charge. You are also allowed one scanner per structure. The basic of the scanner is fixed. Basic range of the scanners is fixed, but also depends on the territory you're in. The recharge time depends on how many blocks you place, of course costing more power. In an allied territory you get twice, twice the default scan range, as do the owners. Owners of a galaxy system additionally get the whole system scanned. If you scan in enemy territory your scan range is halved. If you scan an owned system, you always get the location of the station that has the faction module owning it. This means, with good strategy, strategy and infrastructure, as soon as your faction gets signal of someone intruding, you can send a player with a scanner ship into that galaxy system which can find out the exact position. Scans are a snapshot, so to track moving targets you need a very good recharge. Scans are also persistent, so you can always, after logging out and in again, have access to the last five scans you made. So, under future uses for faction points. In the future, faction points will be the main currency for diplomacy and missions. The only way to earn additional faction points is to do missions. But also, factions themselves can issue missions. A faction can pay faction points for a bounty on the head of another player, or for a mission, taker, mission taken given the amount of resources, and many more. Faction points will also be usable to replenish asteroids in a galaxy system. Because nobody will be able to remember all the rules and keep track, the GUI has been expanded with several statistical functions regarding faction points and scans. Just click the faction point logo, uh, the faction point button in the faction tab, and it will tell you exactly how much you've gained and lost listed per type. It also gives you an overview of all your own systems. You can access your scans in your navigation panel. Okay. So almost all the things you read are already implemented. One big thing left is the galaxy map, which is hoped to be finished in a few days. You can already check out the system in the current dev build. And there are videos coming out on Mushroom Fleet in the next few days to explain and show off all of those new features that are currently in the dev. Should be coming out after this actually. So the spawners explained. In the last update you saw the first occurrence of spawners. This system is an abstract system which is not only there to spawn in creatures. Spawners have conditions and components. Conditions plenty and the first implemented are timer, blocked, block exists, less than x creatures on that structure, less than x creatures in that sector, player proximity and then conditions that can be configured and combined as pleased. If all conditions are met, all components are called. These include at the moment spawn creature, spawn meta item, spawn item. So um, speculatively, I'll give you an example of that, every 30 seconds, or if there are less than X creatures, spawn creatures. And if you kill them all, for example, spawn item gives you weapon, whatever. There's lots of things you could do with that. There'll be many more coming as the spawners will be a vital part of the mission system planned. I hope you like the new additions. Thanks for playing, Star Maid Schema. So, that would be the 
news post from the 26th of August, which was a week ago now. Um, so like I say, um, we are going to do another news show on the next on the next section, okay? But um, because there's so much extra stuff, there's just so much stuff. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this one, and then we'll uh, do do the other ones and record them into videos, which will come out just like a catch up, because otherwise we'll be here for a while. There's crafting update, scrap stations, world manager, custom textures, multi slots. Oh man, and we haven't even got the station results out. So you know, generally speaking, I'd say things are hotting up on Star Maiden. So you want to definitely get a copy of the build and uh, check that out. So remember, guys, we we're talking about the dev build just now. Yeah, dev build, not the current release. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you all next time.